What's the word, y'all? Game two has wrapped, and here we are talking about it. It might be the shortest ramble post-game thing we've ever done here because it's not much to say. When we did episode one or game one of the series, we talked about if Bam Adebayo is going to miss any time, it is a GG's wrap it up because there's not a single person that can even come close to Anthony Davis, whether it be Jay Crowder, Kelly O'Lennon, Myers Leonard. It did not matter today because Anthony Davis was feasting, absolutely feasting. So shout out to Anthony Davis for seeing this opportunity and taking advantage of it. Um, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. You know, we doing these pretty often. I actually dropped the video earlier today as well. If you missed that, go check that out. But this is let's fi let's finish this one because you're going to have time here. Um, Anthony Davis was just dominant, absolutely dominant, so much so that they had Kelly O'Lennon try to get the matchup. They tried Myers Leonard. Eric Spoelstra was like, we just have to go into a zone because on the 101, this, we can't do anything about it. And then that's when Anthony Davis went overdrive, and this is why, this is why I, I don't know who's going to win finals MVP because though he was the, the dominant one and it, it was like it was in our eyes, Le I don't know what the box score says, but at the end of the day, LeBron, LeBron had 33-9-9, didn't even feel like it. So I don't know if they end up closing this series out. And right now, I'm sorry, Heat Nation. It just it just feels that way. They just feels just, there was no moment in this game, though they kept it kind of close at times. There was no moment in this game where the Heat was on a run, and I was like, here they come. It was just like this is a Lakers win from very early on, and that's kind of been the feel for the entire series. So I I don't want to cross anybody off, but it's it's feeling that way. LeBron's team has never been two and zero in the finals is a crazy stat, and now they're two and zero. I don't see I don't see them blowing. The man ended up with 33 9 and 9. Didn't even see that. Didn't even feel that. So I don't know. I mean, I guess LeBron might win Finals MVP because he's got the 9 and 9 and the Anthony Davis at 32. 14 though. This is the funny thing. Last series, I was a heavy criticizing of Anthony Davis because he had multiple games where he had like five rebounds. And for a guy like Anthony Davis, that is unacceptable. We know he can be one of the best rebounders in the league. Then he saw today, he was like, is that Kelly Olenek? Okay, I'm just going to jump right over him. Oh, is Jay Crowder trying to box me out? A oh, spin move. Like I'm Khalil Mack on the D-line or something. He was just getting through it and getting many offensive rebounds, putting them right back up. Shout out to Anthony Davis for just being the great per the great player that he is. I love seeing this, man. I love seeing this um, from him specifically. LeBron underrated 33-99. Again, I had no idea he was doing it like this in the moment. In the moment. Rondo. Let me see something. Let me see something. They shot 34%. I knew they shot over 30%. You remember the stat I told you the last video that we were talking about this series? The Lakers have not lost when they shoot over 30% from three. It is an insane thing to say. And today it shot 34, and it felt it felt like they shot even higher. Rondo was unstoppable. And the reason Rondo was unstoppable, let me, let me fill you in. First of all, I remember the first game Rondo was back. He was terrible. And people were like, dang. Rondo ain't got it. We not getting playoff Rondo, but ever since that day, he has turned it up to the the highest, the highest of degrees. Uh, but the reason Rondo was so phenomenal today, he ended with a double double off the bench, bro. Oh my god! The reason he was so phenomenal today is because he was wearing a pair of Reeboks. That's the only explanation. That's the only listen, listen. That is the only thing I can think of of why he was so phenomenal today. Not only that. The specific Reebok that he dropped or he was wearing are ones that they are rumoring to redrop. Listen, I am a Reebok question maniac. I have like four pair of those shoes. They're the most bulky, kind of the ugliest shoe of all time, but Allen Iverson wore them, so I want them and they feel cool. And Rondo had the Kobe edition. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shoe. Look it up if you have to. But that was the reason he was so good. I mean... I, yeah, yeah, those are the most bulky shoes, the heaviest shoes in the world. But they look good, and he played good in them. Um, yeah, they just felt like they weren't missing. I mean, thirty-four percent is not amazing. It's actually not amazing at all. But in the moment, it felt like they were they weren't missing. They threw that zone out there, and again, LeBron is literally the worst player in the world that you can run a zone against because he is going to pick it apart. He's gonna be like, "Hey, uh, Alex Caruso, go right there, just right there, ease there, ease there, ease there, boom." Here's that pass. Or vice versa. I've seen, I saw LeBron in that dunker spot easing his way on the baseline until he got a pass and then went straight up. The zone is not something you want to play against LeBron. It is not something you want to play against Rondo because you have games where Rondo would get a 10 assist game or LeBron would get a 9 assist game like you saw today. I mean, though it was never really close and it didn't feel like it, I got to give a lot of credit to Jimmy Butler. He tried to do his thing. I mean, he came into this game beforehand. He was like, I got to look for my shot more. And I don't know what he finished with. I know he had a, a close to a triple-double, which is cool. 25. 25 for Jimmy Butler is good. 25, 13, and 8. Um, Kelly Olenek, 
ended up having a 24-9 and game. But I promise you, that means nothing because he couldn't defend anything. Anything. He couldn't defend anything. So, sure, 24 points is a great amount of points for him. But if you're just giving up 30 on the other end, who cares if you're at 24? That's what it felt like from Kelly Olenek today. I mean, they, they had it. Offensively, they were putting up points. But they, there's no reason why the L.A. Lakers should have had 100-plus points going into the fourth quarter. They just didn't have the drive. They didn't have the hustle defensively. It's like they were just very flat. And that's probably what you heard from Udonis Haslam when he was really mad. Udonis Haslam looked like he was about to pull his hair out when he was giving that speech. Um, they just didn't have it defensively. And this is not a team you can do that against. This is not. I mean, if they play better defense, this is a different game. It ended up being a 10-point victory, but it felt like way more than that. Felt like way more than that. Um, Kendrick Nunn couldn't stay out of foul trouble. Um, Duncan Robinson was barely playable at this moment. It's just like, man, it just doesn't, it just doesn't feel like the NBA Finals. And that sucks. Like, these are going to be the last couple games we're going to get before 2021. And then even once we get to 2021, we don't know where in 2021 we'll be back to games. It don't feel like it. I hope that the Heat can make some noise. They didn't say that Bam Adebayo was crossed out for game three. They didn't even say if he was questionable or not. But I hope that we get Bam Adebayo back. I just hope we do. Because that, that is the only way the Miami Heat have a chance is if Bam Adebayo is on that court. Because without him being on the court, Anthony Davis is going to average 30 this series. And he's going to have a 40 piece. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Shout out to J.R. Smith for getting some minutes. Danny Green shot one for eight. And I didn't need the box score for that because I had a friend. We were watching the game together virtually, social distance, and virtually watching the game together. And he had bet the over on Danny Green threes. Um, He hit one. And I told my boy, like, listen, if you're going to be betting on games, please ask me for my advice because I would have told you straight up Danny Green is not hitting any more threes. He doesn't do it anymore. He hasn't done it for a while. That was that, you. Didn't, you shouldn't have bet the over on that with my brother. They said Mike, my boy Mike, kept saying he gonna hit a couple. They they don't call him dead shot for no reason. Yes, they do call him dead shot for no reason. Yes, they do. Cause he don't shoot anymore. He don't hit his shots no more. I'm sorry, he doesn't. That's it. Like I said, this is gonna be the shortest episode. But if there's nothing, there's no storylines. There's no, there's nothing to even talk about. So if you enjoyed it, leave it a like. Hopefully the Miami Heat come back in Game Three. And Jimmy puts up 40 or 50 because they're going to need it.